It was election night, November 7th, 1972. Nationwide, Republicans were celebrating Richard Nixon's landslide victory. But in Denver, a first-time candidate, Pat Schroeder, was about to pull off a monumental upset. In a recently discovered interview from 1972, she forecasts the kind of politician that Denver and the country would soon discover. I feel that the kind of leadership we need is the kind of leadership that's going to get some attention. Otherwise, we have no one with seniority at the moment on the scene, and all we can do is just send someone back and back and back and hope in 15 or 20 years Denver will have some power. Pat Schroeder defeated incumbent Mike McKevitt, becoming the first woman elected to Congress from Colorado. She was just 31 years old at the time. And if it wasn't for her husband, Jim, she never would have run. He's on this committee looking for someone to run. So everybody they got a hold of said, huh, I'm not into being a sacrificial lamb. So he comes home one night from one of these meetings and he says to me, guess whose name came up? And I said, I don't know. He said, yours. I said, mine, I haven't run for a bus. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what do you mean? And he said, no, 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 you'll never win. Yeah. <laughs> With no expectation of winning, Pat ran her own unorthodox campaign. Our campaign headquarters is in the basement, and we called ourselves Kitchen Table Media. So when somebody said, you know, who's doing your media, it's at Kitchen Table Media. And usually people would say, oh, I've heard of them. You know, I mean, so. At the time, many Coloradans were protesting the Vietnam War and were concerned with inequity. So Pat's campaign posters featured powerful images about the war, the cost of hosting the Olympics, and a poster with a message that rings true even today. We took a picture of a migrant child sitting under a crucifix on a dirt floor, and it said, this radical troublemaker is out to get something from you. Hope. The message struck a chord with voters, and Pat's brand of straight talk and bold contrast would serve her well in the coming years. But she was such an anomaly that Washington had a hard time accepting her. They couldn't really quite believe yes that I had gotten elected. And the speaker kept trying to swear in Jim, and he right. kept saying, no, it's her, right. her. <laughs> right. Even among the other 15 female House members, many of whom were filling their deceased husband seats, Pat was out of place. She was a Harvard-trained lawyer with two young children, Scott and Jamie, and no playbook to go by. There was really no welcoming committee out there for me. And there were really no mentors. And I never knew how long I was gonna be there anyway, so I may as well make noise while I'm here and have a good time. <laughs> Pat made some noise. One of her first acts was to take on the powerful chair of the House Armed Services Committee, F. Edward Abair, who had tried to block Pat as the first woman assigned to the committee, and Ron Dellums, the first African-American. So the two of us walk in the first day and we're thinking we're pretty smart. And the chairman is going off about this is the worst thing that ever happened. And, but his only power that he has left, he says, is how many chairs are at the dais. And these two people are only worth half of the rest of you. So they get one chair. So we sat cheek to cheek. Um, <laughs> Got to be quite good friends. And wonderful Barney Frank used to go around introducing me that it was the only half-assed thing that I ever did when I was in Congress. <laughs> Pat handed out buttons that said, help, I've got a bear by the tail. And in the end, Schroeder prevailed, becoming a ranking member of the committee and the leading advocate for military families and the rights of women in uniform, including the right to fly in combat. But it was women and family issues that really put Pat on the map. Women's issues I found particularly difficult. Family issues, very difficult. I don't think there's a capital in, a, in the world that talks more about family values and does less. Right. And it really, right. it really right. bothers me. Pat introduced the Family and Medical Leave Act in 1985. But after years of struggling to get it passed and signed, she decided to take the issue to the people. And we'll have a great American family tour and we'll talk about family leave, daycare, what we should be doing for the American family. But one of the states we happened to be in when we did our little family tour was Arkansas. And guess who the governor of Arkansas was? So when Bill Clinton came, bam, we passed that puppy right out of there and it was the first thing he signed. That was a wonderful day. 
It was a major legislative victory, but Pat was only getting started. As co-chair of the Women's Caucus, she had the means to take on broader issues, including violence against women, child abuse, and women's health, where the bias against women in medical research was a glaring problem. They had done the breast cancer search on men only. They had no women in any National Institutes of Health surveys. They didn't even use female rats. So uh, basically, they knew nothing about women's health. Schroeder's work led to legislation requiring NIH to include women and minorities in clinical research studies. We got the Women's Health Initiative through Family Leave, women having equal access to credit. We were the largest bipartisan caucus in the Hill, and we got an awful lot of things through. And as Pat's political clout grew, her sharp tongue and quick wit delighted her friends and frustrated her foes. It's America, and if you weren't born with attention deficit disorder, we teach it to you within the first year of your life. And so you've got to have a word picture that kind of captures where, you know, right, right. What, what you're saying. Schroeder coined the phrase Teflon president. She famously said, I have a brain and a uterus, and I use them both. And after Newt Gingrich shut down the government in 1995, Pat brought out an Oscar on the House floor. There is no question that Newt Gingrich has now absolutely sewn up the category of best performance by a child actor this year. Pat's humor and wit also made her a sought-after speaker, and it was one of the best ways to fight back after she was singled out as weak for crying when she announced she wouldn't run for president. Everybody's crying now. Look at all the men that want to cry. Ronald Reagan cried all the time as he was leaving the White House. Yes, but I understand he stopped when he got to the bank. <laughs> all right, all right, Nora. What about Wayne Gretzky? He cried when he went to L.A. Yeah, but, but he's Canadian. <laughs> Schroeder was never afraid to laugh and make others laugh. In fact, illustrations of her often use an over-exaggerated smile as her signature characteristic. And speaking of signatures, the story of hers dates back to elementary school. I started first grade and there were five Patricias in my class. And so the teacher said, okay, line up. You're going to be Pat. You're going to be Patty. You're going to be uh, Patsy. You're going to be... And I ended up being the Patsy. And I said, somehow I don't feel like a Patsy. Could I put a face in the P and that would distinguish me? So it stayed with me. It drove people crazy when I was in Congress. When will she grow up? Why does she do this? This is terrible. So you, you, know. you would put the two eyes and a... And a little smiling this face. This little file yeah. in, the, yeah. in the P, yeah. yeah. Okay. Blame my first grade teacher wherever she is. Okay. Pat's first grade teacher would be proud. After a distinguished 25 year career in the house, Pat retired in 1997. She was the longest serving woman in the house at the time, and she left an indelible impression. But she never settled down. Nearly 50 years after first running for Congress, Pat still advocated for action. My frustration now is what I hear people saying, we're frustrated with everything, we're not gonna bother. Well, if you don't bother, it's only gonna get worse. You've really gotta bother. Freedom doesn't come like a bird on the wing. <laughs> You gotta work for it. Pat always bothered and always worked for it. And when asked what she wanted to be remembered for, she was quintessential Pat Schroeder. That I still have the same husband, that both children turned out to be okay. Hopefully I made some difference for America's families, which was what I was very concerned about. And had a little fun with people as we went along. I remember the old days When the world was filled with sorrow You might have thought I was living But I was all alone Open the door and come on in I'm so glad to see you, my friends You're all like rainbows coming around the bend. And when I see you happy